Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Pamela Peel. I'm the Chief Analytics Officer at UPMC Health Plan and UPMC Enterprises, which is our startup and venture capital arm here at UPMC. And today I want to talk a little bit about tele, tele rehabilitation, crowding out brick and mortar, access and equity. So while we here at UPMC certainly cover tele rehab visits and have for some time, even preceding the pandemic, and I know that many of my other my other colleagues who are going to be on the panel also are going to talk a little bit about more of the detail of tele-rehab. What I want to talk to you about today, hopefully this will be a little bit provocative, is this concept of crowding out brick and mortar. What do I mean by that? Well, here's how, what we do when brick and mortar is in play. This is actually, this is UPMC Presbyterian Hospital. It is our flagship academic medical center in the heart of Pittsburgh. So how do people come to our brick and mortar site and receive rehab services? Well, maybe they get on a bus and come, or they drive a car over and come to our rehab. Maybe they even walk to our rehab. What do all of those things have in common? Roads. Everybody is coming for the brick and mortar experience of coming into a clinic is overwhelmingly coming to that clinic via a road. Who owns the roads? That's right, they're public property. There are very few private roads in the United States. So they are federal, state and local taxation going into both creating and maintaining roads. They are publicly owned. And this is how people come to get services from a brick and mortar. Now let's think about the brick and mortar experience versus a digital experience. We've been delivering tele-rehab and other tele-services digitally. What are we using? Cellular data and internet. So we're using cellular and internet highways. Let's take a look at those. It's one of my favorite pictures. A colleague of mine took this in San Diego. This is the roof of the hotel that he was staying at. Look what's growing on the top of that roof. Those are cell towers. Many, many, many cell towers. A little cell tower forest is going on on the top of this roof. Hmm. Who owns those cell towers? You may know some of these companies. You can see that there are three really big contenders in here, American Tower, Crown Castle, and SBA Communications. Those are private companies. They are privately owned. So unlike the highways, which are publicly owned, this highway is privately owned. Let's talk about where it goes. So this is the percent of cell phone coverage by state, and it includes, um, so if you add them up, you'll get 51. I don't want people to be confused. It includes Washington, D.C. That's why it comes to 51. So what you will see is that, so what you'll see is that here, these, there are five states that have 100% coverage and 14 that have at least 99% coverage, and then another 17 that are between 90 and 99. So there's a, a lot of states have a lot of coverage. Oh, we got a little orphan over here. This state has less than 50% of the state is covered. You won't be surprised by what state that is. But as you can see, coverage, cell phone coverage, which we use to deliver telemedicine and telerehab services is not uniformly distributed. Here are the states with the lowest and the highest percent area cell coverage. Shouldn't surprise. There's Alaska, that little orphan sitting up there, with 4% of the state has cell phone coverage. Very quickly, we get into the 50s here with Nevada, Idaho, and Maine. And then there's Montana. And then we are rounding out up to 75 with Oregon, Wyoming, Colorado, California, surprisingly, California, and Washington, Washington State. But over here on this side, with a high percentage coverage, Washington, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Delaware, Indiana, all have 100% coverage across the state of cell phone coverage. So you can see that there are states, and there are many more, obviously, there are states with high, high, high percentage of cell phone coverage and states with very low percentage of cell phone coverage. When we are talking about 
replacing a brick and mortar experience, which you get to on a public highway or a public road with a digital experience, we have changed your access. We've changed the highway and that highway is not uniformly distributed around the United States. Now let's talk a little bit about the internet structure. So internet is the other highway that we're using to deliver tele-rehab and telemedicine services. So when we are delivering these services, they're in the form of a fiber optic cable system. The fiber optic cable system is privately owned and it is done, it is laid by private companies. So who actually owns these? These are the largest tier one, which is a, what that means in the United States is that these companies have such a large fiber optic infrastructure laid down that they don't rent infrastructure from anybody else. What goes on in the cell phone world is all those towers we saw on top of that uh, hotel, they don't deliver self-service to you. They rent space on their tower. So they, just, they develop cell phone towers in places where they can rent them and they rent them to sell cell companies or telephone companies. Here, these particular companies are tier one. They don't rent from other people. They rent to other people. They are also private. These are all private, competitive, private, for-profit companies. So now let's talk about who has access. So in the United States, in general, overall, as of April of 2020, 16% of all U.S. metro areas, areas had households, 16% of households in U.S. metro areas did not have an internet subscription. Again, we're delivering tele-rehab, we're delivering it using a highway that is either cellular or internet. 16% of all households in U.S. metro areas do not have an internet connection. Here's who's got lots of internet connection. Colorado Springs, Boulder, Colorado, Washington, D.C., Ann Arbor, Michigan. These have lots of connections. Here's who doesn't. So in Valdosta, Georgia, which is a lovely little town, in Valdosta, Georgia, less than 50% of the households in Valdosta, Georgia have an internet subscription. Same is true in Brownsville, Texas, Shreveport, Pine Bluff, McAllen, I'm sorry, McAllen, Texas have low percentages of the population in these metropolitan areas actually have a subscription to the internet. So the piece that I want us to think about and have some discussion on is as we replace brick and mortar, here's our brick and mortar, as we replace brick and mortar with digitally delivered services, either via a cellular highway or an internet highway, we are literally crowding out brick and mortar, be an economist way of thinking about that, in favor of these other deliveries, digital. But when we are delivering something digitally, we are, our patients are coming to us on a private, comp competitively held highway. They are not coming on the public access road. So as we move to here, we are moving away from the brick and mortar. And I think that this is certainly introducing a new level of concern around access and equity. And so as we move with this panel, I'm very, very much looking forward to us having some discussion about this um, with you later today. Thank you.